If you choose to do a blurred background with your coloured pencil subject, one option is using pastel mat. In this case, I'm using the maze. And this is an example I've done already that is an example of what not to do when incorporating a blurred background. So I'll work on this side with the same colours and we can look at how you can have a similar effect but it can just look a little bit softer. I'm using the sponge tool here. On this side here what happens is a blurred or a, a bokeh background. Bokeh is from the Japanese word meaning blur and Artists often follow the reference photograph to exactly. So it's a term that's used in photography quite a bit and it is when the background is out of focus or blurred and that's the key element. So on this side, often the artist will use a stencil and draw their circles because that's what they're seeing. And sometimes it, the, the blur, the highlights on the, in the background can look very circular. And the trouble is here that these values are too light and the edges are too hard. And I've seen this many times and they almost look like bubbles floating in the background and it gets a little bit confusing. So think about the word blurred or bokeh and that's exactly what your reference should look like. Just blurred, soft and um, definitely not hard edged. So that's the most important thing because we can't have hard edges. And with this using the sponge tool you can get some lovely softness and you just keep working and working it as you can see it's starting to get nice and soft and if your colours are all nicely cohesive, cohesive, what's that word, um, harmonious I should say, um, then it's going to work and you can just keep going and going till you get that lovely softness so you're getting a similar effect but it just looks a bit more realistic so you have to be very very cautious of having this effect and another sort of negative with that um, popping in that those hard edge circles is because they're actually then become in focus because of the hard edges they start to compete with your subject and that's what, why it can look funny um, so the subject and then this this quite busy background with a lot of floating circles just gets confusing and it overpowers the subject and then you lose the you know the beauty of the blurred background that you set out to have in the first place so as you can see that that gives you the effect of having a lovely blurred background I've left a little bit of pastel matte showing through but you get the drift so it's it's very similar I should actually have a few lights there so it does look a little bit the same um, but yeah, soft, it's got to be soft and it can't be busy, it's just got to be muted and gentle. So avoid this issue and process what's, what's happening. These, when, when you see a blurred background, these circular areas, they're, they're little highlights and um, maybe dappled light in the foliage behind um, the subject and sometimes the, the lens will accentuate those a little bit but you don't see that when you're outside and this is what you do see something like this so just have a practice on with some little pieces and have 
you know, have fun. It's just a great way to cover your background quickly and softly. By using either pans, you can use the dust. If you've only got pastel sticks, you can scrape some dust on and you'll get exactly the same effect. Some of the other options for filling in a background, if you're using smooth white paper, and this is Arsh's hot pressed, is you can use your pencil shavings. So I just use a knife, um, there's other ways you can get a nice dust. Say we're going to do a sky, you can just get a sprinkling of the dust, get a clean tissue, have it nice and flat on the tip of your finger and just work it into the paper nicely and depending on how strong you want the colour just keep adding layers to it. You can actually use your eraser to, if you wanted, say, you know, cloud effect. You can just sort of dab out something really gently like that. Another quick way is using your pencil a little bit on the side. But this linear stroke presents a little bit of a problem with getting sort of a line like that. You might get a little bit of unevenness. But it's very, very fast. And you've got that little bit of grain coming through as well, a little bit of the white specks. Um, you can use something like a paper stamp if you wanted to smooth it out a little bit. This will work quite well. If you get little lines like that you could always just lighten them a little bit with your kneadable eraser, smooth them out a little bit. But that's, that's quite an effective background, the only thing is it's very linear and flat so it would work very well for water. Um, but again you could I guess use a little bit more of a circular stroke and get it a little bit softer if you're doing something where you want a softness foliage or something you'll get a, a different effect to this linear stroke so that's an option if you want to use um, solvent you can, you have to actually have quite a heavy layer, so you need to have to get your colours correct and smooth it out with solvent. This is a very fast way of getting coverage. The downside is um, that depending on what your subject is, if it's quite um, delicate with, you know, you've only used a pencil to blend, this could look a little bit odd. I've used Zested here with a paintbrush. Um, you could let that dry and play around again. I personally don't use it. I don't like the combination of the two. I just love blending with my pencils, but it certainly is an option to cover the area quite quickly. You also have an option of using a watercolour pencil, and this is uh, made by Karen Dash, they're the Prismalos, they're water soluble. And again, it would be getting that first layer lovely and smooth. But it is, um, you can, yeah, but it, it is very, um, quick way of getting a background in and then you can um, depending on the value you can play but you know you need to experiment a little bit first because it does take a bit of practice and I'm certainly a little bit uh, reluctant to use the watercolour at this stage um, because I, I don't do it often enough I think that might be dry enough to zest it and go over it again. We only did it about five minutes ago. 
certainly keep adding a few layers get it nice and deep and of course you know with the, with the water soluble pencil you can use that on pastel mat as well you can use watercolors acrylics and pan pastels to cover your if you want to change the color of your pastel mat so there's, there's quite a few options for backgrounds backgrounds are about choosing the right surface the right medium to suit your subject and experimenting even mixing certain processes to get the background that is going to complement your subject and above all have fun